Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Grafana Office Hours. As always, I'm your host, Nicole van der Hooven, and... I'm Paul Baylog. <laughs> and over there, we I'm have Pascalis. someone new. Pascalis. Nice to meet you, <laughs> exactly, that was a pretty good pronunciation. <laughs> I, was just, I was just like, you know, showing off my pronunciation because you said I said it good, but probably yeah. not. You're just really nice. <laughs> Pascalis, tell us tell us about yourself. What do you do at Grafana? Uh, break things and then try to fix them uh, in a hurry. No, uh, I'm a software engineer in the Grafana Wait, Agent Squad. that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been here for uh, almost two years now, working on the Grafana Agent since the very start and uh, growing into, into helping the team grow into what it is today. Awesome. Before we get into more about what you're, you've been working on, I want to sh talk about some announcements. Yesterday, I and two of my other colleagues, Leandro Melendez, otherwise known as Senor Performo, and Antonio Carriero, what's his last name? I got, this is so bad. Antonio Calero Mereyo. <laughs> I totally know my teammates' last names. Um, we actually did a Café con Grafana, which is like Grafana office hours, but in Espanol, in Spanish. I, I, I meant so, to tell you, I couldn't understand a thing. Hmm, <laughs> could that have something to do with the fact that you're a monolingual American? <laughs> Shade. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Um, but if you do speak Spanish, then check that out, because we actually went through all of the Grafana Labs projects at a high level, and we kind of talked about uh, what each one does and what, what it's for. So there's I've put the link in, in the comments to that one. The other thing is ObserverabilityCon 2023 is coming up. That is the yearly Grafana conference. And it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of jealous that I am not going, but you can still sort of register. You can register to um, get on the wait list because it's sold out. The, the actual physical one is in London. And you can also stream the keynote live. So if you can't make it there, you will be able to st stream the keynote for free. <coughs> and eventually these things will, I think, end up in our YouTube channel as well. So check that one out there are a lot of really cool ones i really wish i could go and then um the other thing is if you would like to sorry i'm suddenly getting a call um <laughs> if you would like Which to <laughs> you can also <laughs> this was coming from my laptop that's why it wasn't silenced um <laughs> If you would like to, the Grafana, the October version of the Grafana Cloud newsletter is coming out soon. I just found out as a Grafanista that you can actually sign up for that on the Grafana site. And it's pretty useful because it tells you, gives you an overview of everything new that's coming to cloud. In particular, the some some of the things that we've already talked about on Grafana Office Hours, Private Data Source Connect is going to be there. There's, um, I think that was the fourth episode, and then agentless, agentless monitoring for Prometheus and Grafana Cloud, which is relevant to what we're talking about today, and also feature parity in Grafana Agent between static mode and flow mode, which we will talk about right now well in a bit first let's talk about what grafana agent even is pascalis what's the deal by the way that was an amazing segue how you tie those <laughs> topics together so good for that uh so yeah <laughs> grafana agent is a, a telemetry collector it's a, a tool for creating programmable pipelines for all your telemetry needs for uh, collecting metrics logs traces and profiles and storing them, sending them back into your uh, preferred storage, either you're using Grafana Cloud, some other cloud vendor, or some on-prem solution. Um, the Grafana agent works with uh, both uh, the Prometheus and the Loki native signals, but we've also tried to focus uh, on uh, open telemetry and to try to be an open telemetry collector distribution, uh, following our uh, Big Tent philosophy as well as allowing users to interoperate between um, 
these uh, two ecosystems. So if you are starting out with some uh, Prometheus-based environment and you want to convert your signals to TLP so that uh, you get like a uniform experience, you can do that. But yeah, uh, sorry for uh, delving into more details, but uh, in, in a sentence or two, just that. Um, a battery is included um, collector for uh, all your telemetry needs. There's a lot there to to parse through. So you said vendor yeah. neutral. So what does that yeah. mean? What what does it mean not to be vendor neutral? Uh, so in our case, most of the vendor neutrality comes from uh, being able to play nice and uh, play nice with the open telemetry ecosystem, and uh, not only um, shoehorning customers into using Prometheus if they are not um, into it or they have already implemented their telemetry using some other um, kind of platform, they can uh, either use Grafana Agent for that, or if um, they've already been using the Open Telemetry Collector or some other OTEL uh, compatible um, platform, they can switch to using Grafana Agent without having to reinstrument all their applications or change anything uh, in the code that produces uh, these telemetry signals. They can just deploy the agent with a different configuration and get the exact same results. Did that answer the question? Yes, it did. Sorry, Paul and I were like <laughs> trying to <laughs> perfectly center ourselves in, in this exactly. new layout and trying like not to call attention to it. My head was so big in this screen. Yeah. Um. <laughs> had to move back or something. Your head is big yeah. every, everywhere. But anyway, um, can we talk about, so you're saying that vendor neutrality, I mean, this is part of the Big Ten philosophy, like you said, that yeah. it's not just about Grafana, although Obviously, we have some advantages, right? So we we already maintain things like Loki, Grafana, Tempo, Mimir, and Periscope. So like, why wouldn't we put our stuff in there? Um, but also Open Telemetry and and Prometheus. So what exactly is a telemetry collector? Uh, generally, it's a tool that can uh, connect to one uh, or more. Um, who can collect uh, telemetry signals from one or more places. Uh, so either pull logs uh, via the Prometheus pool model from uh, different uh, exporters or um, scrape logs of the file system or receive traces and uh, other metrics over the network in a push-based model and then uh, store them in a dashboard. The main uh, idea around collectors is that they abstract away this intermediate um, platform for you so that they both perform the scraping and the collection of data and they push them to some other um, storage without allowing them to stop to query the data itself. So they're just the messenger, the courier between your infrastructure or applications and the backend where you're actually storing and querying the data. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, I, I actually use Grafana Agent. Uh, I've been using it on my home lab. I mean, I have a, a virtual private server and, you know, I have an Nginx server and then I'm actually using the agent to forward my uh, Nginx logs, the access logs over to my free Grafana Cloud account. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool. That and then, uh, you know, my K6 load tests and things like that have it all forwarded as well as the metrics, so it's, it's cool stuff. Yeah, I think your example was uh, much more clear into how Grafana Agent can be useful uh, in doing things like that. Um, in some other paradigm, for example, you could have your application send data back to Grafana Cloud or to your database directly, but the main usefulness of the agent in this case is that it can, uh, for example, standardize the way that your telemetry signals are flowing through or uh, correlate different signals. For example, if you wanted to correlate some uh, Nginx metrics and logs, uh, you could do them, you could do it on the agent side uh, more easily. Uh, or, for example, uh, if your remote system was down and there was a network outage, Grafana Agent could buffer these metrics so that they were delivered when the remote, uh, the network outage was recovered instead of just having to buffer them in the application itself, uh, which would uh, add some extra load to it. 
So we have a question from Cecil Philip, who says, is this a specialized version of the Otel Collector or something specific for Grafana Labs offerings? Good question. Yeah, so as an open telemetry collector distribution, we're not um, adding um, some secret sauce or some specialized uh, instrumentation that will not allow you to interoperate with other Otel uh, compatible systems. All we're doing is um, re-exposing the same components that uh, the Open Telemetry Collector does, the receivers, the processors, and the exporters, under a different configuration layer, so that uh, you can have more advanced and um, reusable pipelines. So we're trying to uh, expand on what the Open Telemetry Collector does with our, our own um, set of uh, improvements but we're not actually uh, breaking anything that has to do with uh, the signals themselves and uh, what OpenTelemetry's goals are from the very start. Well, since we since that was already brought up, the OTEL collector, what is the difference exactly? Um, I, I Correct me if I'm wrong. I looked into it and it seemed like the OTEL collector is aiming to do kind of the same thing for metrics, traces, and logs, but that it wasn't quite as fully featured yet and doesn't, does it do the, you know, the Grafana Labs projects already or not yet? Yeah, as far as I know, the Open Telemetry Collector already has the ability to uh, scrape and send Prometheus metrics or Loki logs. Uh, it's just that when we do it in the Grafana agent, we reuse uh, much of the same code that Prometheus and Loki does. So it's a bit mm -hmm. more efficient, but that's about it as well. Okay. And then I know that there are also other telemetry collectors, but most of them, if not all of them, seem like they specialize in something specific, you know, like Jaeger for tracing or, you know, telegraph for metrics, that kind of thing. And I guess part of the goal of agent is just being a one-stop shop for all of it, basically. Yeah, and it's like seeing how each agent tries to play to their own strengths. Some agents have more advanced like um, debugging capabilities. Some agents have better uh, configuration experience uh, with uh, better UIs and stuff. Our aim with Grafana Agent is to be able to create um, composable and reusable pipelines with uh, the new flow mode that will allow both new users to get started really easily with uh, predefined pipelines as well as allow new users, sorry, as, allow, as well as allow power users to combine the agents components into um, more uh, advanced use cases that we couldn't have predicted. So if you have an advanced use case that um, you want, for example, to uh, have advanced correlation between some signals or, um, I don't know, be able to scrub PII data from uh, your logs, then you could reuse some of uh, the Grafana agent modules to do that uh, instantly hmm. without having to have some dedicated features um, developed for the agent itself. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. And I didn't realize that, that uh, we had scrubbers or things like that for the, the PII data, so it doesn't go over the wire. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not sure so if we, I, I think I think it was an example. I'm not sure if we do have them already oh, in the okay. repo, but I'd have to check it out. Yeah. Gotcha. So, sorry, Nicola, go ahead. No, I, I was going to build on that because it seems like there's a lot of emphasis on agent just being a collector, but it's really also more than that. I think having a middleman, like something in something between the stuff you're trying to monitor and the stuff that is going to visualize what right. what you're collecting, also gives you a lot of opportunities to do things at that intermediate step. So it could be transforming one type of met of telemetry to another, or just transforming the metrics in general to whatever format you want it to be in. It could be like changing the routing, like if you wanted to go to a different instance um, of Grafana or, or whatever. Um, it seems like having something in the middle might help in that respect too, beyond just the collection of it. 
Yeah, I think once you get um, into the gist of it and you try to deploy in uh, like a production environment, that's where the idea of the agent signs versus some agentless integration where it just gets the data for you. So, for example, you might have uh, a rule in your company that for compliance, all metrics must have a certain uh, attribute applied mm -hmm. to them. Or, for example, that uh, you wanted to dynamically be able to tinker with uh, the debugging level of logs that are flowing through. So that, so that um, during an incident, you can turn the debug logs uh, on and then turn them off after the incident to reduce costs. And um, the agent as a platform and the telemetry collector as an intermediate col uh, step in uh, this uh, telemetry collection chain allows you to do stuff like that. It also allows you to scale your uh, telemetry collection independently uh, than um, all your other application infrastructure. It allows you to more gracefully recover from uh, network outages and uh, whatever problems that uh, your applications may have. So I think that's uh, where uh, the usefulness starts to show when you step away from the simple idea of I'm just collecting data and forwarding them to a remote right and uh, going to delve into the more advanced use cases. Hmm. All right. And so what if, if you didn't, if someone didn't, you want to use Grafana agent or couldn't for some reason, what are the alternatives? We've already talked about the hotel collector. What else? I think that you could instrument applications to send directly uh, your um, telemetry back to the remote store, be that Grafana Cloud or some other cloud provider or uh, an on-prem installation of Loki, Tempo, Mimir. Uh, that could certainly be um, one use case. Um, but again, this comes with all the caveats that we talked about before, that uh, you then have to go into each specific application and when you want to change, for example, the debug logs, uh, the, the log level that one application emits, you have to change that through the application itself. Mm -hmm. There's no middleman to filter logs out or to uh, enforce certain attributes and all that. So yeah, one architecture is, uh, like you said, um, uh, send data directly back to your vendor. Um, what other ideas do you guys have? I think I think if we're not talking about instrumentation, there's a lot of other more old school things like server monitoring and and like you know getting all the perfmon metrics and and whatever, and then finding a way to scrape that and combine that. And I mean, I think you're going to have to. I think now in for modern applications, I think it's impossible not to use some sort of collector, right? Yeah. Because we're usually not just doing that to the one monolithic thing anymore where we have lots of services and lots of instances and lots of pods of it. And it, like, it just gets really complicated. So it's a lot easier if you just are able to install the one thing everywhere. Yeah, and especially when it's um, during an incident and uh, something is on fire and you're trying to firefight and try to find what is broken in the system and you have a hundred thousand pods uh, all the like tagging along and you can't find where the problem is it pays to have that centralized platform where you can uh, for example have automated service discovery so that you can uh, monitor everything that's on your infrastructure and there's no blind spots or you can uh, again standardize uh, the way that uh, the signals correlate with one another so that you can make more intelligent um, deductions on maybe this is broken or uh, like uh, eliminate some potential uh, some potential causes paul you got yeah. any thoughts on that well i just got sidetracked by this uh question that came in <laughs> about uh the uh, <laughs> way to dodge the question yes yes no about uh prom tail and then uh, that uh, i guess grafana agent uh, do we not have something where you can forward to a uh, kafka topic instead of you know just over http endpoints uh i don't know uh right now we don't have the ability to um produce to send messages from prom to kafka and uh, i think this is one of the places where agent flow signs 
So we could have built a new feature where you could get like prompt tail logs, do some transformations and send them over to Kafka. But this would have to be a dedicated feature that would only serve like a subset of customers. What we do have is the ability to reuse the open telemetry collector code to send logs to Kafka. So what people could do is take their prompt tail logs, use a converter, convert them to OTLP, and then send them over to Kafka using that exporter. So I think that it's uh, the best of both worlds. You get you both get the interoperability between these ecosystems. You get the battle tested code that the open telemetry collector uses. And if we find a bug, we can uh, contribute back upstream and be good open source citizens and help the community as a whole instead of doing something that um, improves the lives of only Grafana Cloud customers. Right. Big tent and all, yep. We want yeah, to yeah. Nicely with everyone, exactly. Yeah. By the way, Alireza, if uh, you can make this work, uh, feel free to open Grafana an issue on the Grafana agent trip, and we'll be happy to help uh, you with this. <laughs> there we go. We always want more contributors. It's always a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Pascalis wants other people to do his work for him too. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I think I think that's the efficient way to do it. Open source, yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, no, this, you... this is possible right now in Grafana Agent. All you have to do is package it in an efficient pipeline so that other people can uh, can use it as well. So yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just teasing <laughs> you, but <laughs> you know we can't we aren't able to develop for every single use case that's out right. there one way that that you could kind of add a plus one is like raise an issue to the github repository and then or if there is one do a search first and then if there is already one then like thumbs it up or leave a comment and i know all of our teams also look at that as a way to determine you know whether if, if lots of people are asking for a feature then it's probably going to get built at some point mm -hmm. You have mentioned a few times flow mode, and now I'm asking for myself because I actually don't know the difference. There's static <clears throat> mode and there's flow mode. Could you tell us um, what what's the deal? By the way, I, I should say that another colleague, Matt Durham, is going to be coming on an, in a future episode to talk about this topic in particular, flow mode and static mode, and really delve into it. But maybe you could give us a sneak peek. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Just That's hearing that, idea. that little little thing about chaining those uh, those transitions yeah. and things. That's I'm very curious myself. Yeah, so uh, in its very nascent stage, uh, Grafana Agent was uh, just uh, a mini Prometheus mode. So we just took Prometheus and chopped away all the bits that we didn't like. We didn't want to have like querying and alerts, so we just uh, threw it away. And we had the mini Prometheus mode that was just service discovery, uh, scraping, and then sending uh, metrics over to a remote right endpoint, right? And then uh, to add support for logs, we added uh, an embedded version of Promptail. And then to support traces, we added uh, parts of the telemetry collector that uh, had to do with receiving, transforming, and sending over traces, right? But all these uh, made the Grafana agent be more like a disparate product, like a less than the sum of its parts, and not feel like a cohesive user experience for people who wanted um, to use Grafana agent. So we thought that we can change that and we should change that for the best, not allowing us to go for that big trend experience. And we built Grafana Agent Flow, which is a, a reimagining of Grafana Agent based on components. And components are small business, small units of business logic, of logic that um, can, for example, read from a file, uh, scrape metrics, send traces, or uh, perform relabeling or whatever. And you reuse these components uh, into pipelines connected by expressions. So the idea was that uh, we could have like a, a wealth of components that would cover all the use cases that we had at, at, up until that point, and that power users could also try to use these components in novel ways to solve problems that we did not have anticipated up until mm -hmm. that point. Uh, to use that, to do that, we had to change the configuration language. So instead of uh, having uh, the structured YAML, we went for an HCL-inspired configuration language. Uh, if okay. you're into Terraform, uh, you'll uh, 
totally feel uh, in place and um, with all the Terraform uh, hoopla that's uh, going out in the internet. It may... <laughs> <laughs> Who is your reaction to that, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> about Terraform? Well, I, that, I was kind of curious about what, so we're using HCL for the configuration language, which is the, yeah, I the think, HashiCorp I language. think technically not HCL, right? It's, it's, a, it's yeah, similar, it's, it's called River. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's a sneak peek on, on yeah. the future episode. <laughs> yeah, M Matt will tell you all about it. It. So it's it, it looks a, a really lot like it, but it's a totally hand roll thing. So uh, the configuration now allows you to define a number of components and how you want these components to interoperate. So you can have like a component that does service discovery and then feed the same targets into a, a component that scrapes for metrics and the component that scrapes for profiles. Or you could have uh, a network based uh, OTLP receiver that receives networks uh, that receives. Um, metrics, logs, and traces over the network, and then um, transforms them somehow uh, to send them over to a, some like um, OTLP-enabled uh, backend. OK, so, so let, me, let me see if I understood correctly. And please correct me yeah. if, if I'm wrong. It sounds like flow mode um, is a, re, re, a rebuild, a complete re, rebuild of Grafana agent to make it more modular and um, try to use that modularity to be able to basically make it more composable and have reusable components that you can connect in a, in a pipeline together rather than having something that is um, a little bit more tightly coupled. So it's more decoupling, yeah. about decoupling those components. Is that right? Yeah, I think that, that was a perfect description, I think, yeah. And this whole decoupling also really helps you to both build like your pipeline step by step instead of having to debug a giant YAML file that you don't know why it's broken and uh, be able to debug each step of the pipeline and see what's going wrong or how can I improve my pipeline or what's going on in every step of the process. Hmm. So this modularity not only helps us in uh, into reusing like configuration that we know works, but also allows you to delve deeper into what happens in each part of this pipeline and um, improve things gradually. So is there like some sort of a queuing mechanism in here, like a you know workflow controller that's uh, you know as it steps through each of these components that it's saving state or something? Or hey, that's a great question. Uh, basically, uh, all these uh, he components. Sounded so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I usually Me? don't have very good <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was an amazing question. Something uh, had to be there, right? Uh, so yeah, basically, we, all of these components are stored into a graph. And um, I, I can show you uh, how this graph looks like in a second. But okay. basically, each component has a set of arguments that detect, dictate its behavior and what it should do. <clears throat> and also has a set of outputs that other components can reference. So, for example, you could have like a service discovery component that uh, you, you, say, you tell it to look for pods. And then as its output, it will have a set of targets that another scrape component can pick up and look through all these targets. Okay. And uh, part of uh, Flow's usefulness is this dynamic re-evaluation of this whole graph. So whenever something changes, for example, you have a component that uh, tells the contents of a file. And whenever the file contents change, uh, it will trigger uh, a re-evaluation of all the components that depend on it downstream so that okay. they all um, can use a new value. So, for example, if you're using um, a file to store a password and you have a password file field and you update the password, then dynamically when this uh, file is tailed, um, all the components that depend on it will be updated dynamically. Uh, should, I, should we see how this graph looks like? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Please. Yeah. So it's a, so it's a DAG, right? It's I forget what the yeah. acronym is for. Directed but something acyclic, acyclic graph. graph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right. What are we looking? Yeah. Oh, can you zoom in, please? Ooh, like, yeah, of course. This is a pretty pretty big graph, right? Yeah. Don't be scared. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's mostly understandable. So here we have um, uh, a Prometheus scrape components that uh, sends data Can to a remote even more? Yeah, yeah, right away. Here, that's, that will... <laughs> so here we have... <laughs> yeah, okay. So here we have a component that scrapes um, Kubernetes pod, right? And if I follow this arrow, 
I will see that it sends all data to Prometheus dot remote drive component. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I trace where these uh, targets came from, they come from a discovery dot relabel component that uh, flows through from a service discovery component. Uh, the direction here is unfortunately um, the, the other way around because it's actually following not the direction of data that flows through, but the, the dependency graph in the DAG. But uh, if I go through, for example, here in the Prometheus.remote write component, I can see all its arguments. Uh, right now, the external label that uh, we want to add to this component, uh, when we where we wanted to send data to, for example, we have enabled the uh, Prometheus native histograms here. Um, it's uh, credentials, uh, it's qconfig, and we can see that this component exports a receiver that other components can use to send data to it. Uh, here we can see also uh, some debug information that's uh, for this component is empty. And we can see which other components uh, depend on this one in the graph so that uh, all of these components do send data back to this. Uh, we also see that all these components are healthy, which helps when uh, you have an issue with Grafana agent. You can come here and uh, see what's the status of each of my components in this pipeline. Uh, do we have a misconfiguration in some place? Is some uh, part of the pipeline um, bottlenecked and can't process um, items quickly enough? So it helps to figure out uh, where something might be going wrong. OK. Um, so maybe we can talk a little bit about how to get started with this. So uh, by the way, what is the what's the bottom line here? Like if someone wants to start using Grafana Agent today, are you suggesting that they go straight to flow or should are there use cases where it's still static or where should they start yeah like uh if you asked me last week i'd say they might be they might need <laughs> to use static mode because we had some use cases where a uh, grafana agent flow wasn't there to cover it that we didn't have all the components that we needed to be able to be on feature parity and uh, allow you to just uh, transfer your existing pipelines but with the v uh, 037 release, we do have feature parity, and all your static mode use cases should be able to be uh, are able to be covered with flow mode. Uh, so two things: if you're already using Grafana Agent, you have some uh, static mode configuration. Nice. You can use one of our converters to automatically convert your static mode uh, configuration to flow mode, so you don't have to read all the documentation from scratch and um, understand how these components are tied together. We do that for you. Uh, you can run the agent and then see the graph and start understanding how the data flows. Uh, if you don't uh, have any static mode configuration and are starting today, I do recommend that uh, you go with flow mode. It's the future of Grafana agent. It's uh, much, much easier to debug, uh, much easier to understand. Uh, you will feel at home uh, if you're an SRE and have worked with Terraform, so you shouldn't be scared of the config language. And the configuration primitives that we use are um, pretty similar to what Prometheus, PromTel, and the OpenTelemetry Collector does. So whatever you might be able to configure on the Prometheus side, all the tweaks and knobs that Prometheus or the OpenTelemetry Collector has, we have it, they might just be exposed under a different block or uh, you might have to write the correct snippet for it. So we do have a question here about the dashboard that you were showing. Kibambe Ntambwe. Kibambe Ntambwe says, is this a new dashboard, especially for Grafana agent? And there's actually an answer. Alireza Yavarifard says it's the Grafana agent UI. Exactly. So this is not a dashboard. You don't have to push data somewhere to see this data. All Grafana agent flow uh, instances have this UI for free. So you can just uh, port forward your Kubernetes pods or simply like point it uh, at your, the port that the agent is running and be able to see how your components uh, correlate to one another. Okay, and maybe we could talk about the, the different installation options because so there's you, you talked about static mode and flow mode, but there's also static mode for the Kubernetes with the Kubernetes operator. So yeah. is there a corresponding Kubernetes operator for flow mode? 
Uh, to be honest, the operator was a, a totally separate way of running the agent, which made things uh, super confusing for users. And it only really served users who were already into the Prometheus operator ecosystem. They knew how to set things up and uh, they just wanted an easier way to setting up Grafana agent. Being a, a third way to run the agent meant that uh, configuration fields were um, only updated when somebody noticed it and it really wasn't an optimal experience. So for Flow, we're moving away from um, the operator as a deployment method. Mm -hmm. And we just want to simplify things for users. So you can just deploy the Grafana agent on your Kubernetes clusters in any way that you like. Do you need like a daemon set to scrape logs from uh, every uh, node spots? Then you can just deploy a daemon set. Do you need the deployment, a simple deployment just for traces? You can do that. Do you want a stateful set? Feel free. What you can do is use uh, the operator specific components to be able to reuse the same CRD that you were already using. So if you were depending on some service monitors to find all the different service endpoints to scrape, then you can use the service monitor operator component so that Grafana agent flow can automatically scrape all of these and forward the data to wherever you want. We have another question here, also yeah. from Alireza Yavarifard, who says, when when will the clustering mode in Grafana agent be stable and production ready? What is this clustering mode they're speaking of? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, Grafana agent clustering is uh, one of the advantages, uh, one of the different scaling mechanisms that we're um, trying to build into Grafana agent. Uh, so that you can uh, allow a set of agents to coordinate between themselves and spread the load uh, um, of scraping uh, metrics and profiles. So if you have like a thousand Kubernetes spots that you want to scrape and you saw that uh, you needed to scale up uh, the agent a lot, you can now deploy five Grafana agents uh, or add a horizontal pod to scale it in front of them. Mm. And uh, all the agents will work in unison to uh, find the same targets and then decide which uh, agents own which. So they will roughly uh, split up the number of targets between themselves and thus roughly uh, share the load of scraping those targets. And this has been a, a beta feature for the past couple of releases, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I don't uh, have a very good time frame in mind. I don't wanna promise a date like uh, live here. But I think that uh, <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> yeah, it's only it's a idea, it's time, right? it here, yeah. <laughs> I think that um, we'll probably be working in the next uh, couple of months to um, make this even more robust. And hopefully by early next year, we'll not only have this be a stable feature, but also allow it to work for uh, other types of uh, telemetry, not just a um, pool-based uh, collection of metrics and profiles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is this the what you would recommend if people want to scale Grafana Agent horizontally? Are there other options? Uh, the other option right now is to use the canonical way of uh, scaling Prometheus instances, which is Hasmod sharding. Uh, which um, is a bit more uh, is a bit more um, nuanced. Uh, you have to like manually change your configuration every time you want to scale up or down, and it, have, mm -hmm. it comes with a, a couple of caveats. So you probably want to use Hasmod sharding only if you have already a use case for it, and also have the maturity to roll out configuration uh, confidently to all your agents. I think clustering uh, works similarly enough to Hasmod sharding. So when you read the concept page that uh, Nicole has shared here, you'll be able to understand exactly what it's doing. And I think that it should be the recommended way of scaling up uh, the agent. Again, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, feel free to come by the open source repo to tell us your experiences with it and help us improve clustering. What are you saying? Hasmut sharding? I'm I'm not familiar with that. Or term. hash map? Hash uh, map? It's a it's a hash mod sharding. Hash uh, mod. It's a yeah. It's um making use of relabeling rules to distribute um, 
scrape targets uh, within Prometheus. Let, let me see if I can find the link to it. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, so Kibambe Ndambwe also has another comment. I'm sorry, but I don't find the port to be used to visualize the Grafana agent flow. Is it 3000 uh, that you had there? Uh, this was uh, from uh, one of my own deployments. Uh, by default, it's one, two, three, four, five. Oh. Uh, if you're building the agent from source, you have to uh, use the make command. It won't work if you just uh, run go build on the binary since it needs to bundle some of the, the front end stuff. But if you download uh, the binary from uh, one of our GitHub releases, it should be already set up for you there. So it's uh, the same port that you use for uh, the agent's API. By default, one, two, three, four, five. Is this something that can easily be spun up in Docker for playing around with and looking at the configuration and things like that? Yeah, I think that um, we do have some um, uh, documentation guides on how to start uh, running the agent in Docker or in bare metal instances. Or uh, We have a pretty good Helm chart that you can uh, use to um, get started in Kubernetes really easily. So I recommend that uh, people uh, do take a look at our documentation and uh, play around with it. I'm, uh, OK, so I here. did post. <laughs> I did post the the URL for what you said the the hash mod sharding there if anyone yeah. wants some more information on that. And then um, here is the documentation for installation of Grafana agent. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to post that as well. And is this only for flow mode, the the cluster mode? Yeah, it's currently a flow mode only feature. And uh, the no... reason to go flow. Yeah, exactly. OK. All right. Um, do you have anything else that you'd, you'd like to demo before we go keep going? Uh, no, we can, uh, we can continue, I think. OK. Um, I was interested in, in the performance of it. So in when it's in cluster mode, obviously that's it, it's almost like because we have all of these um, we have an entire observability stack now, which kind of in itself is an application as well, aside from the system that you're trying to monitor and performance really matters. So is there anything that you can share about what you've done or tried with with agent to make sure that it remains, you know, pretty lightweight and performant? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that the, the main thing that we've done is uh, not try to reinvent the wheel. So we're reusing the same battle-tested code from uh, both Prometheus, uh, Promptail, and the OpenTelemetry collector, mm -hmm. and try to also uh, regularly um, contribute back any gains that we have found in performance. So we shouldn't be um, far away from uh, either of um, these upstream systems' performance. Uh, the flow model does not add like a considerable overhead to what we do. And I think that we're running the agent in um, pretty large scales within Grafana as well to dog food and uh, find these problems early. Okay, last week we had someone on to talk about the metrics endpoint integration for Grafana Cloud, which they're calling agentless. agentless. And it's yeah. actually not agentless. It's hosted <laughs> agent. Lies. <laughs> were you, it's were like you at serverless. all involved in that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Serverless, yeah. no servers. Just yeah. no servers for you. <laughs> uh, no, and uh, I'm I'm super happy that we actually didn't end up uh, actually working with it. Um, these guys, uh, <laughs> the, the team. <laughs> No, I mean that uh, the team uh, was able to use Grafana Agent to build this uh, metrics endpoint uh, and this agentless integration without uh, like um, needing to do something specific from our side. They oh, were able awesome. to use the, the existing tooling and the existing agent um, functionality that we had to build on that, which was super cool. 
So one of the benefits of that integration is actually that you don't have to, the, anyone who uses it doesn't have to worry about installing agent at all or configuring it or whether it's using static mode or flow mode. It's, it's all just done for you. However, one of the disadvantages is that right now it's only for Prometheus metrics, right? And agent can actually do much more. Are there any other things that that come to your mind of when people would should deploy their own their own Grafana agent and and manage it um, rather than just using the Grafana cloud hosted version? Uh, to be honest, I haven't really looked at uh, this offering to see um, this the specific uh, features that it offers. So I may be completely off base here. I'm not sure what it happens with authentication and whether it only supports like publicly accessible endpoints, uh, because uh, when yeah. you have like a more um, something some like a firewall or a, some other network infrastructure in the way, you probably don't want to give access to to anyone to scrape those endpoints. So that's it one is thing. public only. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have auth tokens or some sort of uh, HTTP auth, but that's yeah. It's got to be publicly yeah. accessible. I do remember him saying that. Just like a bearer token kind of mm. thing, if you if you want to, but um, it has to be accessible. So yeah, if you don't want to expose those endpoints, then you're just going to have to deploy your own. Yeah. So for example, if you wanted to, if you had like a MySQL database that you wanted to get its met metrics out of it, uh, you probably have to run an exporter yourself, which you probably mm -hmm. don't want to up ending on the public internet. Uh, and one of the things that Grafana Agent does, because uh, we mentioned the uh, batteries included at first, but we never really touched upon that, is the ability to run um, exporters uh, within Grafana Agent itself. So one of the things that the agent does is it bundles popular um, Prometheus exporters for uh, most of your infrastructure uh, observability needs. So you don't have to run these uh, on a separate infrastructure. You don't have to um, worry about it. Like, is my exporter up? Uh, is my exporter reachable? So you can uh, start up a component that can uh, connect to my SQL database and um, expose Prometheus metrics for it. Or you can uh, have uh, another component that uh, reads metrics from a Kafka uh, queue. And you can, uh, again, use that to correlate with other signals so you have a more complete picture of what's going on in your stack. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really like all that transforming and the filtering. That's uh, that's gonna, that's gonna powerful. Also, something that you can't do with the hosted agent implementation. Yep. Because yeah. you don't have direct access to it. And we talked about one of the recent changes in Grafana Agent is that flow mode and static mode are now at feature parity. But I can you tell us about the continuous profiling support with Pyroscope? Because Pyroscope. that's pretty new, right? Yeah. I need to I need to get that's some of those folks on stuff. here. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's the cool kid on the block, exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Plane <laughs> yeah. graphs and things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, Ooh, I, 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 I hadn't used profiling in the past, profiling in the past, but uh, I used it recently to just diff like uh, the performance of two different agent versions and finding like where a performance regression was. It was super obvious, fantastic to use. I would recommend that people just uh, do try it out. Uh, so yeah, um, Grafana agent flow is the way to uh, scrape and uh, write profiles back to Grafana Cloud. Uh, once the OpenTelemetry project has um, converged on uh, their own set of components for profiling, we'll be sure to have that as well in the agent. But uh, it's uh, as easy as um, defining a new pyroscope.scrape component and pointing it to all the things that you want to be profiled. Then you can uh, use a pyroscope.write component to send the data back to Grafana Cloud or your um, database of choice. And ta-da, that's it, that's all. Then you can just go there and um, profile, uh, like drill down into your profiles. Uh, one more thing that's also available uh, is uh, eBPF-based profiling. So uh, you can uh, use Grafana Agent uh, in your machines. You have to run it with certain permissions, if I'm not mistaken, but you can use it to have eBPF-based uh, profiling as well uh, for certain use so cases. 
Is this using Bela, which is the other new kid on the block? <laughs> uh, I I think not, but uh, yeah, there are too many new kids on the block. Uh, right. I, I might be mistaken. Yes. I can't <laughs> keep up, and and I work here. <laughs> uh, it's amazing that the industry is like uh, moving forward and uh, like playing around with new ideas. I think that uh, I'm also pretty honored to have like a front row seat in all of these. Yeah, it is amazing to to work in one company where all of these new things are are coming up all the time and things really change because of it. Um, so, what is the, if it's not using Bayless? How how does that work? The eBPF based profiling. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'd have to uh, reach out to the Pyroscope squad to find out. But I, I think okay. using oh, so that's kind still of using that they're using still using Pyroscope. Using. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that they're using some probes that uh, they run. Mm. All right. I'll have to get them on. Um, but let's talk about the future of Grafana Agent. Like, what are the things that if you can share without sharing, you know, deadlines or, or anything, any specific dates, what's coming? What are what are the like overarching goals, even if it's like way in the future? Yeah, I think. Uh... Our biggest goal is um, trying to get people to use Flow, to try this out, this new thing. And uh, it's uh, probably sometimes hard to get people to switch from something that's just working to uh, get more feedback around how this is working, uh, set success stories about people using Flow and um, polishing this into something more than just featured parity with uh, what the static mode offered with uh, all the subsystems that existed but find ways to make it an even more compelling um, sell for people who just want to use a telemetry collector and uh, try to go through more like of those things that we talked about, about what the middleman can do, like in this uh, whole um, telemetry pipeline, but uh, add new scaling mechanisms, add better debugging experience with uh, a better UI, um, try to be a good open source citizen and uh, play even better with uh, the open telemetry ecosystem. Um, I think that's the gist of it. But again, uh, the community involvement is uh, super important for us and uh, we'd love to hear back from people using Flow and uh, how they can help us uh, save its future as well. Yeah, and I see these are no. I noticed in the documentation these are river components. Um, <laughs> so flow in the river and all that. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't even. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. River is yeah, also just, the name of the language. The HTML language. language. It, 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 you use it to write flow components. Yeah. 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 No, that's funny. We have so, to keep up with the nautical theme everybody's using. Exactly, that, so. exactly. I mean, yeah. there are so many <laughs> themes, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it seems like there's a Norse mythology theme, but then some are like yeah. Greek. Anyway, yeah. it, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> Themes all over the place. <laughs> but you talked about playing better with the hotel ecosystem. I think you mentioned in a previous conversation that you would like, I'm not sure if it was you or Matt, but you said that agent that an, an ideal future for agent would be that it's a an hotel collector itself. What does that What does that mean? Um, the open the limit. So it, I might be a bit of pace here, so don't uh, really quote me on that. But uh, from what I know, the open telemetry community has this concept of distributions, so that. Um, individuals or companies or uh, organizations can opt to build their own distributions of the open telemetry collector to be able to better serve a specific uh, customer need. So for example, some people may run a, a more stripped down version of the collector as a security focused uh, distribution. Some people may add a different configuration language. I think that uh, in the future, we would like to be able to be a drop-in replacement for the open telemetry collector so people who use the open telemetry collector or Grafana agent can seamlessly switch from one to the other and be able to find ways to improve the collector experience uh, with um, our own improvements, either that scaling mechanisms or uh, I, I don't know what. There are so many things to choose in the future. I, I don't know which uh, direction this whole thing will go. 
What about conversions of one type of telemetry to another? Uh, you mean like uh, going from uh, metrics to logs and vice versa? Yeah. Yeah, I think that there are some uh, open telemetry components that already do that or that can infer like uh, correlations between components and that we're already like uh, um, importing them into Grafana agent as well. I'm not aware of uh, anything uh, new on that front though, like uh, anything that's, uh, that, that's upcoming. Anything around auto instrumentation? Could be again, not sure. Uh, yeah, I feel I, like he's just being cagey so that he he doesn't commit himself. <laughs> doesn't release the. Uh, the Come on, I, I just committed to making a clustering stable tomorrow, right? So yeah, I, yeah. I fell into the same trap again. <laughs> okay, so um, I totally didn't warn either of you this. Uh -oh. <laughs> Paul knows what's coming, so yeah. I would like to play a little bit of a game. I Yay. think this Alice is is going to be game for this. Um, I would like to play something called the podcast game, where we summarize everything that we've just talked about, but we do it in turns and we do it improv because we've totally not discussed this. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be five minutes. We are going to try and go over what we talked about um, and there will be a name that comes up and whoever it is, is going to be the one to talk for a while. And then the next person will have to follow on from that. Does that sound okay with you both? <laughs> it, it sounds scary, but again, it's <laughs> Yes, this is, this is the time to do scary things live. <laughs> All right, are you both ready? Uh, sort of? I'm up. Yep, I'm ready, let's do this. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've just been talking about Grafana Agent. Grafana Agent is a vendor neutral batteries included telemetry collector, which means it's a thing that you install on components so that it, it takes the metrics, logs, traces, and profiles, and then sends them somewhere else. And it's really cool because we have some new updates using the river language, which is Terraform inspired. So you can chain components together so that you can do transformations, uh, you know, uh, altering data, c aggregating possibly. And the, the fun thing about these components is that they allow you to build reusable pipelines and allow you to inspect what happens in every step of the way. They allow you to see which components are healthy, which might be falling behind, or allow you to debug, uh, to have debug information on every step of the way. We are talking now about the flow mode of Grafana Agent, but the current and older version of it is called static mode. The idea is that static mode is eventually going to be replaced by flow. And static mode is using everyone's favorite uh, lang markup language of YAML, which defines all the, uh, the outputs for where your logs and traces and metrics will be directed to. Uh, so what are you waiting for? There are already um, <laughs> um, ready-made converters for you to go from that Gnarly YAML to the shiny new river configuration language where uh, you can have like uh, this composable pieces. Of, but... Yeah, it's, it's kind of a more modular uh, way to approach agent because then you can reuse those in these pipelines. The bottom line is that if you're starting now, you should go with Flow. Yeah, and Flow is really cool too because it uses DAG for uh, having these graphs containing all the data and the state in those that get passed around from component to component. Which is visible uh, via the UI that's present on the default port of Grafana Agent. One more cool thing that we talked about is the interoperability with open telemetry and trying to adhere to the Big Ten philosophy over here at Grafana. So and that's what we really mean when we say vendor neutral, because even though right now Grafana Agent does things like Loki, Grafana Tempo, Mimir, and Pyroscope and takes all of those signals, there's more. Exactly, because we want to make sure that we play with other things, uh, other, <laughs> other vendors nicely. <laughs> 
And this is all in the sake of trying to become a better open source citizen and uh, trying to improve the entire ecosystem instead of just locking you through to a specific set of signals. So there are three modes, installation options. You can do static mode, static mode with the Kubernetes operator, and flow mode. You should do, most people should do flow mode if they're starting now. We also talked a little bit about scaling and one of the advantages of flow mode is that it has a cluster mode. That's right. So the cluster mode you can configure that has things like service discovery and making sure that uh, all your updates are made. You can use uh, other uh, horizontal pod auto scaling if you're in Kubernetes. Uh, so that the, the, the agents can, set, can seamlessly share the loads between themselves. Uh, a final thing is that Grafana agent comes with a bunch of bundled exporters so that you don't need to run them on separate infrastructure. And that's one of the things we mean when we say batteries included. Some recent changes in Grafana agent are that flow mode has now reached feature parity with static mode, and there's now continuous profiling support using Pyroscope that includes eBPF-based profiling. We've also talked about the future of Grafana agent, like trying to get people to use flow and not static and coming up with the use cases and documentation to support that. And there's always too the option of agentless, which really isn't agentless because it's using agent under the cover. <laughs> so, but it doesn't provide all the, the mechanisms that you would want. Uh, you know, if your private systems can't have endpoints that can't be exposed or transforming is necessary. So if you really want to learn more and are intrigued by all of this, uh, please check out our documentation. Feel free to come over by our open source repo and start a conversation uh, uh, or join our community Slack. And that's all. That Ooh. was awesome. <laughs> See, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> I thought that was actually pretty well done. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. Pascalis, thank you for being such a sport and for coming and answering all of our questions. <laughs> it was great having you. Definitely. Thank you all for doing this. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to learn more about this topic, I've included the links to the repo of agent and also documentation in the description below. Next week, we're actually going to be talking about front end observability with Grafana Faro. And that's going to be not with Paul, unfortunately. I mean, Paul, you're welcome, but no. <laughs> I'm going to be doing that with Marie Cruz. So I'm going to be coming in live from Lithuania. So I will see you then. Have a good weekend to both of you and to everybody who's listening. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.